Welcome to Handy Quilters Watch and Learn. I'm Kim Sandberg and with me is Kelly Ashton. We're both educators here in the education studio. That's right. And today we're going to choose, show you how to choose a stencil design, how to resize it so that it yeah. fits exactly on your quilt, and then some more great tips just on using stencils to get designs onto your quilt. Yep. So, so let's get started. So okay. why do we use stencils? Well, when I first started quilting, it was a really one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. was how to get a design to my quilt fabric. So I might find a design that I yeah. liked, but now what do I do? Am I supposed to just freehand it or how yeah. do I get it to that to the fabric? Mm -hmm. So when I learned how to make stencils, it kind of just opened up a lot of opportunities of things we could do. So I'm going to show you some examples of quilts I made a long time ago. With stencils. <laughs> with stencils. Okay, I love it. And so... Let's start with this one. Bear with me a little bit. So this was a quilt made for my son when he was seven. It's he, such a cute quilt. He loved bugs and he, he grew up in a quilt shop so he knew a lot about fabrics and stuff and just a funny story. You know how you randomly try to place your blocks but not really randomly because you yes. don't want two greens together, two yes. blues together? Yes. <laughs> so I got this all laid out, sewn together, and I went, oh, there's two blue ones together, and there's three brown ones oh. together. So I fixed the blue ones, and I went, eh, but brown ones are staying. I'm not fixing them. Yeah. So I put them on my seven-year-old's bed, this quilt on his bed, who loves bugs. I thought he would just see the bugs and be right. so excited. And he's like, Mom, why are there three brown blocks together? <laughs> They're supposed oh. to be, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he loved bugs. And this was just really cute fabric. And, cute. and I had really big borders. Yeah. And I wanted to put some bugs in the borders for in him. In the borders. So, yeah. Okay. So this one I love maybe. that. So I, I took the fabric mm -hmm. because you can see the turtles right there maybe. Oh, cute. And I put, Frogs. yeah, I just put a turtle in the corner. <gasps> Cute. A dragonfly, a frog, I just put different things in the corners. And, and you can't see them very well, mm -hmm. but for a seven-year-old, oh. he was like super excited that he had these extra things quilted into his quilt. I love so. it. It was like a secret code from his mom, right? Yeah. That's so, so cool. Like their name being quilted in or whatever, mm -hmm. it was just like he liked the bug. Mm -hmm. So that was, so what I did was just looked at the fabric right. and wanted to get those designs onto my quilt. How do I get them onto my quilt? going to show you a couple more examples yeah. before I tell you the answer, yeah. okay? All right, so, let's take a look at this one Now here. to my grandkids, yeah. Yes, grandkids, so, which have such these, cute. These, these are, are so well cute. used, so we're just going to well hold loved. those there for now, yeah. So I chose Minky that kind of was something that the kiddos would like. Mm -hmm. So the Lincoln got On pirates. That he likes is pirates. adorable. I love it. And he wanted a pirate birthday. He just really liked pirates. Yeah. So, so I wanted to take a pirate and yep. put it on the front of the quilt with his name. Oh, So adorable. making a pirate was not something that I could just come up with. So I just had to take the pirate to the, the copy machine yeah. and blow it up and then be able to applique it and quilt it on the front of the quilt. And use that as an inspiration to kind of create yeah, your own so little... Yeah, so I used the fabric as inspiration. Yeah, so I we'll love it. show these two a little bit. This one was just an owl oh, so and cute. it had the owl Well, and I minky. noticed, yeah, the owl and the minky. And you did some couching on this one. Yes. How fun is that to add a little bit of extra detail? This guy was, he's, this little guy was really tactile when he was small. So I even put oh, strips fun. of the couching on it because he just it. loved to rub things. So that is so great. And then this one, this oh, this one, one's got multiple. Yeah, this little. one was birds. Oh, so cute. So I just took some of the birds, and this isn't this isn't really my quilting. This was kind of applique, it but it's applique. the same theory, right? Mm -hmm. So I just yep. took and same with their names. I just had to blow up their names. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so learning how to make a stencil kind of opened up all these different yeah. ideas and opportunities for for my quilts. Absolutely. So let's show you. Yeah. What how kind of we, tools you need? How do we create a stencil to be able to take images or designs? and to make them the size that you want to be able to put them on a quilt. Exactly, okay? to be able to quilt them. And I'm kind of going with characters today. You can do feathers, you can do all kinds of yeah. things. Like the designs or opportunities are limitless. But So I took, oh I didn't bring the fabric in, but I took the same kind of thing. I took this fabric and I just photocopied the fabric. Uh huh. But I needed it bigger. This, oh yeah. This is like three inches and I needed yeah. it like 10 inches. 
Yeah. So I want to show you. Um, yeah, too small. That's too small. You too never small. see what it is. Yeah. So this is called the Quilter's Assistant Proportional Scale. I love this tool. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. I think I had it in my studio for a few years before I understood how to use it. So uh -huh. I want to make sure you know how to use it. The inside circle is the original size. So I'm going to say that this, this little photocopy is three inches. Okay. And then I want it to be 10 inches. Okay. So I make the outside ring 10 inches and I line up the three inches on the inside and the 10 inches on the outside. Okay. And then it tells me how much I need to right there, blow it up. In the window. So I just take it to the copy machine now. And because what I did before was I took it to the copy machine and blew it up. Um, and you had to guess, right? Yeah. And it's 150 like. 150%. Oh, too small. Yeah. And like 17 copies later, you still haven't gotten the right size, right? Right. Right. So this told me to go from a three inch block to a 10 inch block. Mm -hmm. I actually had to blow it up 300 and. 50%. Did I line that up right? I think it's just a hair over 350, yeah. I might have shifted yeah. it just a little bit. Well, and you know, one of the things I love about this, I remember somebody explained to me how to use it, and I was like, I am never going to remember that. Luckily, yeah. the instructions are written right on it. They're right on it. So, And you can do it in reverse. If mm -hmm. I had a 10 inch block and I wanted to make it, say, Smaller. 8 inches, mm -hmm. I line those up and it tells me that I need to reduce it. By 80%. 80%. Very cool. So this little tool comes in really yes. handy yeah. in my studio. <laughs> Yours as well? Me too. Absolutely. Okay, so once I get the copy mm -hmm. or the picture, the size I want it, here's my 10 inch porpoise and my 10 inch frog. Mm -hmm. Now what? Kim, do I just lay it on well, the quilts? No, because you want to simplify that to be able to right? stitch it out because we just want to stitch out the outline. Right. You're not going to go in and stitch out all that extra detail, right? Nope. And well, I might stitch out his eyes. Yeah, oh, that's, and that's mouth, true. But I don't need to stitch out you, the rest of you're it. You're not necessarily going to stitch out everything. Um, well, I know that marking stuff is always hard for me. So I know we, you have a really great method. We have a really great method of creating yeah. a stencil using the good old golden threads the quilting, quilting paper. paper. This stuff is awesome because yeah. it is thin so it's easy to see through. You can trace. You don't even have to put it on like a light box or up to a window. No, and you, you can, can trace. just see right yep. well, Maybe this one I didn't draw and you can see right through it. Yeah. I have a leaf on there, but it's easy so to then see. I just traced this porpoise right onto this Perfect. paper. Right? Perfect. I love it. Okay. But then still, how do we get it onto the fabric? So you have a couple of options. Yeah. Okay, so I could put this right on the fabric and I could stitch right through it. Right, because this, this paper, like, yeah, it tears it just really tears easily. Away. I've done that for really intricate things, yeah. Trick. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tear it off, don't just start tearing it off. Take Wait till your quilt comes off and then pull your, your fabric on the bias a little oh. bit. And then you can just take um, the sticky... Oh, like the, the lint lint roller. rollers? Yeah, and okay. then you can just pick up all the little extra pieces of paper like oh, that smart. if you choose to stick, stitch through it. But if you choose to stitch through it, then I have to make one for every square I yeah. want to quilt it in. Yeah. So instead, I'm just going to turn this into a stencil. That we can use over and over, and over, and over, and over. again. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Like even more than on this quilt. This, yeah. I've packed around stencils in my suitcase for, for sure. years and they still work really well. Yep. So how do we get holes in the yeah, in I already paper. made them in this, so let's so, let's talk about this frog. How are we so, going to make holes in this So frog? there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One, you can take it to a sewing machine and take the thread out, and then you can just stitch around it. Like drop your feed dogs, just a domestic sewing yeah. machine and do that. You can do it on your long arm too. Just make sure your alarms are turned off so it's not telling you, hey, there's no thread. There's no thread. You can do that. Or this is this is one, and I had fun showing this to Kelly because she hadn't I've never seen, seen this seen before. This. So this is a tailor's will, but it's actually one that has um, larger spikes on it. Yeah, it's a lot pokier than yes. the old ones I used to use. Yeah, so there's there, there's ones that just have kind of like a, I almost want to say like a serrated edge on it, but it's not sharp, and those are for like the carbon. Yeah. These ones actually poke holes. So you can just use that and make sure you put a cutting mat or something underneath it when you're doing it. Could so I do it right on my fabric? You could, you could do it right on your okay. fabric. But you can just take and just with a little bit of pressure, you can just roll that right along your line there, and you'll end up with those little holes. Perfect. That you can put the pounce pad through. Before I knew how to do that, I'll show you how I did it. How would you do it? 
So we have um, this glue tape dispenser. Yeah. It's, all, all it is is double-sided sticky tape. Yeah. And I'm going to put it on the back of oh, um, nice. this. The stencil. Not, not where I'm going to stitch, though. Right, right. I'm just going to put it on like that. Okay. Okay. And then I can just put this on my fabric. Uh -huh. And I'm going to actually unthread the machine. Okay. okay. There we go. I'll have to thread it again in a second. It's okay. Easy and then, enough, right? And then I like big stitches. I don't, like I'm going to put right. it four or five stitches per inch. I'm not going to make ten stitches per inch. Yeah. I just want, and I'm just going to hold this in place. That little sticky kind of holds Hold it. it. And then I like to set my hand on the ruler base and kind of help me slow down. Okay, so you have the ruler base I on right now. I have the ruler base on there. Kind of using that as a table. Uh-huh. Very and smart. And then I just stitch around yeah. the frog like this. And you know what? It's okay if I don't follow the lines exactly. Right. Nobody's gonna know. Because, and then I would leave that needle up, but I'm just yeah. gonna make holes all the way around, okay? Yeah, that's perfect. And I, I did it already on the porpoise. Nice. The dolphin. I actually helped a friend uh, just a couple of weeks ago. She was working on a vintage quilt for somebody and it had a whole bunch of open negative space oh, fun. and then fun. it had kind of maple leaves in a lot of the blocks and the maple oh. leaf blocks were what was vintage and what they were really wanting to share with this family member it meant oh. a lot to them and so we we just copied the maple leaf I love it and we just quilted faux um, maple leaves in all of those open blocks with the negative right. space so it worked out really well that's great okay now I poked holes through this porpoise yeah so on this way. So on this side, it's really rough because right. that's where the paper went through. It's poking up. This side is smooth and this side is rough. So which side do I want up when I'm <laughs> pouncing it? We want the rough side up. We do want the rough side. It's a trick it question. It pulls that powder. It just pulls the fabric or the, the powder, powder down into yep. those holes. Yep, exactly. So, so I'm going to stencil this on here. Okay. Um, I like to ask when I'm teaching how many of you have successfully used a pounce pad before. Yeah. And the key, key being word, successfully. successfully. So um, let's talk about pounce yeah, pads really let's quick. Do. When, it's awesome. Yeah, when you get a pounce pad, it has a seal mm -hmm. on it and, and you have to break the seal and that's why it's called a pounce pad. You have to sit and pounce it mm -hmm. until you get an even distribution of chalk. And we chose the blue one so that you could see it. Yeah. Okay. So I do have to, I do have to give you just a caution with blue chalk. If you're going to use it on your fabric, you need to test it and right. make sure that it it will come out. Always, just like Always any other test marking it. tool, right? It's really hard to get out of white. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I've been going to do some more research on it because it, I found out the colored chalk kind of reacts with the sizing that's in our fabrics, oh, and so it was okay. designed before we put the sizing in. So okay. if you're pre-washing, which I don't like to pre-wash, I like my nice. <laughs> firm fabric so well and I want to just get to cutting and sewing right yeah not spend time pre-washing pressing I know pressing. I'm pressing <gasps> again who wants to do that uh, I no, know I know a lot of you like to pre-wash it's good it's fine but yeah. we all get to do our own thing yeah okay so I have the rough side up but I have the ruler base on the machine and I really like to use this to my advantage because when I'm pouncing oh yeah if I have that ruler base underneath me, it gives me a nice flat surface to pound, to, to stencil against. Right. So once I've initially got an even flow of chalk through my pounce pad, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm ready to use it. Okay. I do not pounce it at my quilt. Right. So I pounce it before, and then I bring it to my quilt top, and I swipe. Swipe. I'm just going to brush it across there. Yep. And okay. that's where those little holes that have been poked through, they just grab that chalk and they pull it down to the fabric. I just move it around a little bit, yep. make sure that I got oh, all look of at that. that. That's perfect. Can you see that cute little I porpoise? I can totally see it. And it is so great because it's right there. I'll be able to quilt it. And then um, most of these pounce, it's either iron off or a lot of them while you're quilting, you'll notice that the chalk will kind of bounce away. Yeah, you, so you can kind of wipe mm -hmm. off the extra and. But another trick is if you if you feel like your chalk is not staying on the fabric, mm -hmm. you could just spritz your fabric a little bit before you pounced it. Mm -hmm. So spritz your fabric, put your stencil down, even the paper, it's fine, and then yep. and then swipe the chalk across, and you're 
the water. Your chalk will stay yeah. there with the water. Exactly. But like Kim said, there are two different types of chalk on the market that right. I know about. Right. Um, one of them is is um, it's an iron. water soluble, water. and yeah. one of them is the iron. Iron off. Yeah, the iron yeah. off. So just make sure you know which one you have, so that mm -hmm. um, with white chalk, generally all it takes for me to remove it is just to take my lint, yeah. the velvety lint brush. Yep. And just and I just rub it, and it'll come off. Yep. So totally. So okay. now stencils. So we talked yeah. about how to get the design there. One thing that's is a little tricky. Uh -huh. is, is just learning how to, to quilt a stencil. Do yeah. you want to talk yeah. about tips yeah. to quilting with stencils? Yeah, yeah, let's okay. talk about this. So one of the important things is you look at the stencil and first you need to choose like kind of your stitch path. Right. So it's always smart to take a minute, um, you know, while you're making the stencil, especially the way that Kelly did it here in the frame, that's kind of a chance to practice stitching it out ahead of time. Even taking your finger and running it along, you mean letting when I yourself stitch the know, holes in it? Yeah, when you right, stitch the okay. holes in it, that's like a good practice run. But figure out what your stitch path is going to be. And don't forget, if you're starting to stitch it and you get stuck somewhere, stop. Put your needle down, step back, and take a look at it and figure out where you need to go. You mean the machine stops? It does. It does. Sometimes I forget that. Button, I get I so excited. <laughs> I, know. Okay. I think we all do. Yeah. So and, and don't be afraid. Sometimes, especially when you're creating a custom stencil design, you may need to stitch back over some of your stitch pads, right. which is fine. Yeah. It's okay to do that. Once again, you have yeah. rules. But the most important thing when you start stitching is to always be looking ahead and not looking exactly where the needle is. If you are looking where the needle is, you're already too late to make any adjustments. It would be like driving down the road and looking at the hood of your car. Right. You can't react to something that's down the road. So you always want to be looking a little bit ahead, a few inches ahead, so that you know where you're headed and where it's going to go. But I think the most important thing is to remember, when you're done, is anybody going to know exactly what that stencil looked no. like? What's supposed to happen to the chalk when you're done? Yeah, it goes away. It's gone. Exactly. So it doesn't matter if you followed that line exactly, but it does matter if you made a nice smooth line. Exactly. So if you think of like the old uh, dot to dots that we used to do. Yes. One to two to three to four. We got lots of like square cats because we didn't yep. really know what shape we were putting between one and two. So if you just think of like the dot to dot and you make mm -hmm. your dots, but think about the shape, the arc between or the, the loop what just think about the shape mm -hmm. you're doing and look at your point you're headed to you're going to have a much nicer absolutely. smooth line absolutely absolutely that's a great tip it's yeah. just so we do it so naturally when we drive a car yes but you really have to train your eye to do it at this machine because we all want to watch the needle that's yeah we want to watch our stitches yeah. so don't watch your stitch no nope. nope. look ahead look ahead always be looking ahead yeah think like you're driving a car so that's important and I, I think the other thing is is to be creative with these yeah. Have fun with it. You know, we showed you how to pull a design from the fabric. There's lots of different ways that you can get inspiration yes. that you can find to create your own stencils and make them fit perfectly on your next project. That's right. Right. And you have all the tools now yes. to make it the right size and to get that design right to your fabric. Exactly. So no so. excuses. If you want to so put cats on yeah. your next your next quilt, you can do it. Or if you want to do fancy feathers and yes. you haven't ever been brave enough to try. This is a perfect way yes. to get the feathers on there and just be able to follow that path. So follow that line. Try something new this week. Yes, yes, I think that sounds great. Kim, let's take just a moment and talk about this quilt on the wall. Yeah, let's do. Isn't this an amazing quilt? Yeah. This is another vintage quilt from our awesome challenge that went out to the National Educators. This was quilted by Martha Higdon, who lives in Indiana. And this is all free motion quilting. And one of the things we loved about this was we sent her an email and said, hey, Martha, tell us a little bit more about how you quilted this quilt. And she actually used the Golden Threads paper to create the arch and to mark it evenly so that she would be able to get these pieces so in all her, her quilting would be yeah, even. precise and even. Yeah. Exactly. And the best part, because she created the stencil, she, didn't ha she could just very quickly mark it and then move on to the next thing. But that is it, is, it is an amazing quilt. And she spent some serious time quilting this. She said she spent over 35 hours. I thought 37 this. and a half. You did a fantastic job, she Martha. Did. We love she it. She did, it's amazing. Yeah. I love all things orange, so this quilt yeah. really spoke to me. It's beautiful.
Yeah. Well, thanks for watching today. Be sure to watch next week and we'll share more tips and tools that help us in our quilting journey and hopefully inspire you too. Yeah. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with all of your quilting friends. But most of all, have fun quilting this week.